we know that data is the future. Um, and the challenge for us as an industry is how do you monetize data? And that's in a, in a market and in an environment right now where 70 to 80 percent of all your revenues is coming from voice. So, you know, how many industries do you know that are looking over the cliff that says 70 to 80 percent of your revenue um, probably may not be there in two to three years? How do you actually shift your business model? How do you actually shift your customer behavior? How do you convince your customers that they should actually play, pay you know, a reasonable, fair price for data as it goes forward in this changing market? And you've got competition coming from the internet that have a different business model, that actually give your services away for free and get paid for it in advertising. Uh, there's, there's like two interesting foods of thought that's being created that says, is data protection the right way to go for the consumer to protect the consumer, to look at security, to offer all kinds of different value propositions, or does data production um, actually stifle innovation? And if you look at the data protection laws in the U.S., completely different than here in Europe. I think it's really blurry now to understand what's the difference between um, a telco, uh, the music industry, uh, software companies, uh, banks. In other words, anything that you can think about that's digital is an opportunity for you to expand your business. And if the entire internet is now going mobile, I can actually see the mobile phone being the remote control of your life. I think that flexibility and that individualization coupled with um, social media and social websites and how actually the consumer will have more individual power than he does today uh, gives you just a little bit of insight where all the markets and industry is going. There's a whole lot of things that it doesn't make sense for telcos to get into. But to be a smart aggregator or to make things easy or to give customers the ability to have choice, this is a natural home for a telco. And I see telcos partnering and working together with many, many uh, players that didn't exist in, in the past. I'd also say with some of the cost structures and some of the cost challenges that we have, you're going to see an acceleration of network sharing. You're going to see an acceleration of um, telco industry that used to look at the competition in a different way that may become your friend. Uh, because if you look at the, the infrastructure costs that it actually takes to deliver the value that we are now experiencing for our customers, it doesn't make commercial sense to keep on designing this yourself. And I think the telco is one of the last industries to really consolidate. And I think we can take some great lessons learned of industries that are far more advanced and far more mature like the automobile industry or the construction industry or industries that you know, are over 100 years old that have gone through multiple cycles on the economic scale. And I think you're going to see the telco industry going through that. I think the next 20 years, actually the next 10 years, and if I'm bold enough, the next five years, is where the radical change is going to come to place in the future. Customers will tell you where they want things to be delivered, and customers will tell you price points that will be acceptable to them. So can you imagine what kind of world that is in, where your customers are deciding your, your profit level? That would be unheard of to have this discussion five years ago. But if you fast forward into 20 years, that could be a reality. Is your company prepared to operate that way? Is your management prepared to lead that way? And are you prepared to be bold enough to actually be an early adopter and actually see that market coming in the future. Ninety percent of all the data that exists today did not exist two years ago. So ninety percent of all the data that we know of in existence in every single industry, from banking to telco to software to IT companies to, to you name the company, 90% of the, that data has been created over the last two years. Now forecast that phenomenon in the next 20 years. What do you think is going to happen? And what do you think the opportunities are for us going forward? It's going to be fascinating. You will see uh, machine-to-machine -machine, uh, activities um, 
exponentially kind of grow. I think that you'll see everything connected uh, at every time uh, on the internet, whether that is uh, the mobile internet or a, a new type of technology going forward. I think it will be interesting. I think I think it will be free. Uh, I don't think that people will charge for it. I think it will be an expectation that it just kind of happens. And uh, I think if that's the case, I think there will be new commercial models that need to be developed in order for you to really, um, you know, find the opportunity and find a profitable situation. And I think some of these business models haven't been invented yet. But um, I'm very bullish that uh, everything will be connected somehow. And uh, I think it will be irrelevant of what the technology will be. Um, I think the biggest thing of companies in the future that will be playing in the digital world is, is trust. And I think if you lose trust, I think getting it back is very, very difficult, if not almost impossible. So how do you gain trust? How do you secure trust? Well, you need to offer your customer all kinds of um, um, safeguards, and I think you need to offer the customer all kinds of reasons why they should actually go to you, because what you're going to do is you're going to secure um, their personal data, you're going to secure the data integrity that you're working on. Um, and it needs to be more than, or you get your money back. Um, and I think that is an opportunity to uh, evolve in, in many companies to, to play in that market. Without a doubt, um, cloud is a buzzword today, and without a doubt, cloud delivers real value to uh, consumers and to business people. Is cloud for real? I think cloud is for real. Um, why is it? Um, why is it for real? Why is it going there? Well, it, it has commercial advantages. It has commercial advantages for those offering the cloud, and it has commercial uh, advantages for those actually using and purchasing cloud activities. I would say the things that will really make cloud take off is continued investment in, in new technology and infrastructure, continued um, innovative value propositions of products and services that people want. We really try to educate people on you know, the, the, the great opportunities that technology can give you, but also the pitfalls, because uh, unfortunately there still are some people out there that have different values than perhaps you and I have. So um, I think that, again, will become a mandate and become necessity. And one of the things that we've been thinking about is, um, does it make sense to kind of create a, an internet driving license? You know, something that's achievable, but at the same time something that you can be proud of, that says, you know, I've got this driving license because I know how to drive on the internet. And uh, I think that can be applicable to young people, to uh, teenagers, to parents, uh, and to businesses. And I think that that corporate responsibility and that social responsibility is something that is deeply embedded in the culture of Telefonica. And it's absolutely something that we stand for. Because um, a lot of the um, telco experience is uh, very local. So there's got to be a local flavor to things. Uh, it's also an industry today that's regulated now, it's regulated on a country-by-country -country basis. Uh, I think regulation will actually keep things from accelerating going forward. I would say that emerging markets actually have an opportunity to leapfrog the Western world and the mature world. Why do I say this? Well, technology's moved on. We don't, we don't have the time, nor is it economically feasible, for us to be digging and putting cables in, in the ground. It's all about mobile activity. It's all about technology over the airwaves. And there's a lot of societies and communities in Asia and in, uh, in Africa where it makes no sense to kind of go back to the old technology and actually embrace the new technology. I think technology will be a vehicle to actually help people out of poverty going forward. So um, I don't think the Asian or the African continents are going to miss out. I think they're actually going to teach the Western world about opportunities they're missing.